Okay, this is Chelsea Marks. We're doing ETT 220 task, uh, 222 task 20, and it's uh, free catch urine on a dog, so we're going to try to collect that. Come on. And then zoom in when we get it. Okay. Free catch sample here that we got a couple moments ago. I'm gonna show you that it's um, two cc's here. You can see the two. Um, so we have that. We have our patient chart, which is for Lucy Southmaid, and we have our doctor's orders here to do um, a UA right there. And we have her little UA sticker that we're gonna use to write our results on. Zoom in on the supplies here that we've collected. Go over each one. So here we have our um, urine reagent strips that we're going to read. Um, one drop of urine on each stick. We have our urine sediment stain that we're going to use when we do our sediment portion. We have some water to rinse off the um, distilled water to rinse off the refractometer. And we have our cover glass one microscope slide here labeled with her name on it. We have a transfer pipette here and a centrifuge tube for the urine. We have our refractometer. We have pens and sharpies for writing on our charts. And we have our microscope right there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start the UA. Let's zoom back out here. Okay, so we have our um, two mil sample here collected, and we're going to first use the little sticks. Let me zoom in here so you can see close. Okay, so we're going to dispense one little drop of urine onto each little pad here. Okay, so we have dispensed urine on each little pad of reagent strip, and we're going to wait um, 30 seconds to start reading some of those. Um, next thing we're going to do is take our refractometer and read our urine-specific gravity. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so you can see me doing that. Here. And read that. And that's 1036. So we'll come back over here and rinse off our refractometer with this distilled water. And then record the 1036 here on our chart for the specific gravity. And we are going to take our reagent tube here has the chart on it that we're going to follow and read as we go. So we will record that also. So first uh, reading at 30 seconds is glucose and that's negative. And the second reading at 30 seconds is bilirubin and that's also negative. Third reading at 40 seconds is ketones, and that looks negative. At 60 seconds, we read the blood, and it looks like there is no blood, so also negative for blood. pH is going to be 6. Protein, we're going to have, looks like 30. 30 milligrams per deciliter. And euro 
Bilinogen is normal. Nitrate is negative. And leukocytes is also negative. Um, and that one can be um, unreliable on those strips anyway, so we don't actually use those. So um, second part of this, we're gonna go ahead and determine the color and clarity. So this, let me hold it up to something white, um, just a bright yellow, nice and clear. There's no floating things in it, looks good. Um, there's no odor to it, and we have about two mils. Um, now we have about a, less than two mils because we just used some, um, but that looks good. So clarity's clear, color's yellow, quantity is two mils. So we're gonna go ahead and put some here into our centrifuge tube a mil and a half and we're going to take that over to our centrifuge here okay. and we're going to spin this down so that we can perform a sediment on it so we have a matching counterbalance here and we're going to go ahead and start spinning that down according to manufacturer's recommendations we're going to set it at 1700 rpms um, for about five to ten minutes on low and once that is finished we're going to come back and read our sediment sediment here nicely spun down uh, a little bit of a plug in the bottom there a little white plug we're going to decant let's see here the supernet come back over here and work with just the sediment portion so we use our clear plastic pipette you mix it and then put one drop on the slide okay. and then we're going to take our urine sediment stain and put one drop of that stain into our centrifuge tube so we have that mixing in here turning it purple and we're going to put one drop of the purple mixture onto our slide I'll show you our slide here. Okay, so two drops. We're going to put cover slips over that. One cover slip on each drop. Okay, so we have that ready. And we're going to head over here to the microscope and start reading it. Okay, so starting on the 4x so that we can get zoomed in and right there. Um, starting on the 4x so that we can focus in here. So I'm just using the large focus. There we go. And going down to the 10x. You can scan for things like um, lar like casts, large casts, and large crystals. You can see those as well. Um, stuff like the red blood cells and the white blood cells you're only going to see on the 40X. So we'll move up to that one next. But this 10X, we can go ahead and scan for larger um, amorphous debris as well as larger crystals. So we're just going to scan, looking for any of that. So we want to look at the stained side as well as the clear side, unstained side, uh, because sometimes your stain can have um, bacteria growing in it. So we look at the stained as well as the unstained side. So my stained side is looking pretty good. A little bit of amorphous debris, probably from our free catch. So I'm going to go over to the unstained slide and look for anything over there. This is looking pretty clean. Um, this is just a senior screen UA. She's not expected to have a UTI. So this one's looking good too. Okay, so we're going to move over to the 40X now. And take a look here. Okay, so we're focused in again. So on the 40X, you're going to see any sort of white blood cells, red blood cells, 
and you're going to see the cast and the crystals a lot clearer. So I'm not seeing anything yet. A little bit of debris, some fibers. Going over to the unstained side. Same thing, not much on this side either. Again, a little bit of debris. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and turn that off and clean up our microscope area a little bit here. I'm going to go over cleaning up. So we put that in the sharps container there, close up our cover glass, and clean away for the next person. Same thing with the sediment, make sure the lid's on. And we're putting away our reagent strips. We already washed our refractometer with the um, distilled water and it's dry, so we're going to put it back in its container. We have all of our sample here that we're going to toss out. And then spritz the counter off. So the results are recorded here in the chart and everything is either negative or we have our specific gravity here, 1036. And we also, the only thing we found on our strip was a little bit of protein, um, 30 mg per deciliter. So we recorded that there. And then I'm also going to note that the sediment was quiet. Um, no casts or crystals seen. So you have that recorded in the chart there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up the urinalysis task here, which is going over the different types of crystals and casts that you're going to see um, on a uh, microscopic exam of the urinalysis. So I'm going to show you some pictures here. <coughs> Excuse me, first one here is calcium oxalate. Um, they're really pretty uh, little squares, kind of like, um, they're actually more like a pyramid um, with little points here but they're um, really easily identifiable as the X's across the little square. Um, you're going to see these with a high um, urine pH, which is an acidic, uh, so it has to be less than um, 6.5, 6 6.5. Um, it also um, is going to be really prevalent in urine that contains a lot of uh, calcium or oxalates individually. So um, you're going to see these um, with increased frequency in dogs over the past 15 years, so we have noticed that um, calcium oxalates have been on the rise. So here's your other type that you're going to see most commonly. These are struvites. So um, the urine description, this is going to be with a low urine pH, so an alkaline urine, which is um, greater than 7.5. So you're going to also see these with um, predominantly with um, urinary tract infections, so um, overgrowth of bacteria, uh, mucus, and if you have a lot of um, magnesium, ammonium, phosphorus, um, phosphate, combined, it's going to create a plug or a stone made up of the struvite crystals. So uh, one third of the dogs and one half of the stones in cats are going to be made up of this struvite material. I'm going to go over uh, casts next. So the casts that you're going to see here on microscopic exam are your hyaline um, and your cellular and your waxy. So um, the hyaline casts are um, sometimes present in very healthy patients in very few numbers. Um, larger quantity means some sort of renal disease um, of the glomerular disease sort. Um, it's made of mucoproteins from the DCT, which is the distal convoluted tubules, um, in the collecting ducts of the kidneys. So that means your kidneys aren't functioning properly. We have your cellular type. Um, the cellular casts are going to occur with um, acute injury to the renal system, so more of a nephrotoxicity, uh, pre-renal obstruction, or a severe dehydration um, with an IV fluid rehydration, so you'll see those wash out. They can also contain some red blood cell, white blood cell, or sloughed or damaged epithelial um, cells. Then you have your waxy here. So those occur more frequently with chronic re renal failure and are always of significance. So this does indicate tubular injury um, or renal disease of uh, the tubular sort. So those are your casts.
And that is the end of the urinalysis video. And those are the cells, um, cellular tests, and the um, crystals that you would see on microscopic exam.